This is Modern Homesteading. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about crosscut saws. No self-respecting woods, but just a tiny little center. Beautiful. So we're really lucky to have even the original handles that came on Granddad's crosscut saw. So Jack is uh, going to start with some 180 grit sandpaper, finish up with some 320. And then we're going to put some linseed oil on it. Of course. So I'm going to work on the blade and he's going to get those handles nice and spiffied up. I like woodwork better than metalwork. <laughs> I wonder what Granddad Chester would think of us doing this to his old tools. Yeah, I think he would be very pleased. You know, I don't think this is, this saw has been used much. I mean, look at the handles are so like new wood. You know how my small axe, how the handles all polished from years of use. You don't see that with this. What we have here is essentially a brand new saw. That's it's been sitting in the attic. Yeah, fortunately, Granddad took care of his tools and kept it oiled so it's in really good shape. You know, Granddad lived through the Depression in the 30s, and so he knew what it was like to go without. So he saved everything. He would even, when he pulled out nails from boards, he would uh, pick them up off the ground, he would straighten them, put them and save them in the can because he knew what it was like not have those things to be without them and so he always took care of everything. You know we are so spoiled that oftentimes we just throw things like that away, don't even think about it. We've got the polish pretty much finished up on the on the crosscut blade. I'm gonna finish up with some steel wool. I'm gonna take the steel wool and work on these tips. Or because I didn't want to get the my uh, grinding stone up there, but we're just about done. So in the meantime, <clears throat> I'm working on the handle hardware. You can see right here, here is a uh, finished up. How nice that cleaned up right there. Just use the wire brush on the, the grinder. Here's what it looked like before. So you can see just a couple minutes. That really cleaned up nice. These are nice here. Look how they're retained. So they're peened on the end with a hole a little bit bigger here. So you can open it, install it, but you won't lose the pin out in the field. You know, just little details that are, that's, uh, that's clever. And so we've got the wing nuts as well. This one here, you can see the before and after. These cleaned up really nice. And then there's three other additional parts. So these pieces are cast and they're painted. And actually the paint's still good on them. They're just a little bit dusty and dirty. So there's no really any rust on there. So we'll just uh, clean those up with the steel wool, and uh, while I'm doing that, Jack's going to work on the boiled linseed oil. So I went ahead and just finished, uh, I took stripped the paint off of the cast pieces. It was kind of chipping, it looked a little crummy, and that looks a lot better here. So we got those cleaned up nice. Those look great. Beautiful. This is a beautifully built tool. Look at the casting mark in there. Very nice. These are all turned on a lathe. Just quality. Just a properly built saw. Alright, so let me get the handles uh, uh, linseeded up here and we'll put it together see how it looks. Having the original handles, man, that, how unusual is that? Never even heard of that for a saw that's a hundred years old. I liked my boiled linseed uh, for my prep, I like to start with a, a 320. I'll sand it real good with a 320 and then uh, finish up with, uh, excuse me, start with a 180 and finish up with a, a 320. That seems to be just about right. Gives you a nice bit of grip, but certainly no slivers. It's not going to give you an unnecessary 
blisters. That's nice, nice bit of hickory there. Something to work with these tools, to have my hands on these handles that my ancestors used. Something that's just special about that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Before we make the sheath and put the saw away, we're going to cover it liberally with a nice protectant oil, a gun oil, a rim oil, all the metal parts. Work it all in by hand. This will maintain that beautiful and hard thought polish that we just put on the saw. The old timers who worked with these saws every day, they gave all their saws names and they gave them the women's names, the female names, because they were all individual. They, were all, had, they all had their own different characteristics. There were no two alike. And so I have thought about that and this being my number one felling saw, I'm going to name it Wanda. So no woodsman with a fine crosscut saw like this would ever allow it to be damaged, dropped, um, or put in jeopardy anyway. And so a sheath, a good solid sheath is, is vital. Some people will sandwich them in sheets of plywood with wing nuts. Uh, that's a good way to do it. Another good way to do it that's inexpensive and very effective is a um, fire hose, double jacketed five inch fire hose. I use this on a lot of sheets. It's got a nice heavy rubber and a, it, there's nothing tougher than fire hose. So we'll split this down the center and we'll cut a section and build a nice quick sheet for this crosscut saw. For Wanda. Double jacketed fire hose is just what it implies. It's just got an extra layer on it. Firemen uh, drag their hoses around on the asphalt and so it's designed this way that the outer is kind of a protectant of the inner. So we don't need both of these. So we'll cut this off, we'll strip off the outer, throw that away, and the inner will be sufficient. Now with our hose cut, we can put our sheath on. Majority of the wounds received by people from crosscut saws are while putting the sheath on. You know, it's that type of thing where, you know, accidents always happen. So they say the majority of accidents happen within a couple of miles or a mile or two from your home. Uh, this is the case. So be careful with this. These teeth are made for cutting. They're made for cutting wood. And they'll certainly cut your flesh.